Welcome back guys. Today we're just going to get straight into it. Um, I'm going to do a talk on Cobia, how I personally, how I find Cobia here off the coast. As there's a few big ones starting to kick around, the whales are starting to show up. I've already got one as you saw in the video, it wasn't a big fish, but you know, about 40 pound or so. A nice fish and we lost a couple of bigger ones. And in the shop a few guys have been asking me some questions on how and when you chase Cobia. So I've got the old trusty whiteboard over here. I know you guys love the whiteboard board with all sorts of bits and pieces on it. I'm not talking rigs today. I'm not talking outfits. I've done videos those in the past. I'll link those videos to the comment below or in the end screen or somewhere, but you'll see them. Today, it's all about a few tips on where and how and what to look for when you're chasing cobia. All right, guys, so we'll get into it. I'll turn the camera around for you. Put a bit of light in the subject, hopefully. I'm gonna say, hopefully you guys can see that. Hopefully it's not too bad. That should be all right, I'm hoping. All right, now let's get into it. First of all, we'll start over here in the top left. I've got here a picture of like a bit of reef and you'll see a bit of a ledge and like a bit of bait and some fish down in the side of the ledge and a big green cross root, should be a red cross, but cross root. Surprising, I don't know why, but this is what everyone looks for when they go offshore. Everyone goes offshore and they're looking for reefs, they're looking for ledges. Like they're the magical spots. I don't know why. Yes, they do work well for certain species, but when you're looking for cobia, you will find cobia around reef, don't get me wrong, but you'll find them in other spots. So everyone I talk to is heading out looking for a reef, wants to know a reef, but I keep on telling people. Okay, I've got here, not sure why most people look for reef to fish and don't worry about bait that's the main thing here guys when you chase some big cobra is bait bait and structure but bait okay so i don't go out looking for that what we do here if you look at this picture the next one down guys on this one oh the board's falling over a bit there sorry guys getting hard to see or we'll straighten that up hopefully that's a bit easier to see Okay, in the next one down here, we've got people catch bait and leave. This is like in the bait grounds. You've got flat ground, you've got a heap of bait, and here's a couple of fish, a couple of these big green lines here, a couple of arches. But everyone, when they see flat ground, they see a bit of bait, they catch the bait, and then they leave. Why? Where you find bait, you usually find predators. So don't go to the bait grounds or go out and you've all of a sudden find a bit of bait in the middle of nowhere and it's on flat ground and think, I'll catch some bait and leave. Especially if you see big arches around it, or fish around it, don't leave. <laughs> like I've got here, most people find bait and flat ground, catch bait and leave. Even if you see the big marks, people still leave. I don't know why, everyone's got a mindset that they have to fish reef, they have to find a ledge, they have to find a bit of a drop off. That's where the fish are. It's not always true, guys. Get yourself out of that mindset. Great for snapper if you're fishing for snapper, or even dew and stuff on the back edge of reefs, or kingies and that out wide, like reef and like bait. But fish like cobia move around, and generally you'll find them around bait schools. I don't, this board's gonna drive me nuts. Um, I said I don't care if the bait schools are on flat ground or on reef or wherever it is, find bait. Like here's one of the top spots that most people around the world will know. Cobia like wrecks, and wrecks surprisingly hold bait. If they've been around for a while, bait will gather on wrecks and you'll find cobia on wrecks. For some reason they love wrecks, they love bait. So if you know where there's wrecks off the Gold Coast, go and have a look. If they've got big bait balls around them, have a motor, catch the bait, have a look around. If you see big arches like lines, squiggles or whatever shows up in your sounder, around the bait, stay in fish that's more than likely cobia. Okay, so wrecks are a very good one. I know there's I know there's three there's three out here that I fish and every one of them hold bait and every one of them oh, they hold cobia. The only difference is it's off the Gold Coast, so it's hard to get to yourself. But we'll get to that shortly. So fine wrecks, good spots. And here's what I've, this is me, this is what I do. I find bait. I always fish bait schools no matter what off, what's on the bottom. If I mark, mark big fish on the sounder or around the bait, which is true. I don't care about the bottom. The bottom can be flat as a tack, sandy, mud, I don't care. If there's bait there for some reason and it's got marks around it, big fish around the bait or going through the bait, that's what I fish, guys. That's where I find the cobia. Everyone thinks I've got secret spots. Not really. Um, I find bait. 
get out of this going to reef pattern. Reef's nice for certain fish, like I said. If you see this, and this is covered in bait, and you've got to cut the big arches around it, by all means, fish it. But if you go out and you see this nice ledge and a couple of little dots here, and you went past like big bait schools like this on flat ground to go to that, I'm going to smack you. <laughs> You're going to sit out there in this beautiful looking reef and maybe catch a couple of squire or something when you just caught some bait and probably left 50, 60 pound fish behind. Just because of the bottom was flat. Get over the flat bottom bit. Fish bait. No matter where the bait is. Alright? Um, next bit. When? So... Basically March, April, June, July, September here in southeast Queensland. This is the best time to catch cobia. Yes, you will get them all year round. I know you guys catch them when you chase chasing mild and mackerel on the close reefs and out on spot eggs over the summer. But they're generally the small fish. And when I'm talking small fish, like 6, 10 kilo sort of fish, they're small for cobs. So they're summertime fish. Winter time, this time of year, is when we get like anywhere from 40, 50, 60, 80 pounders. Or basically up to 100 pound fish. Okay? I have caught them out here to just over 100 pound. So... This is the time of year, it's over winter and the whales are here, it's cool, and you get a lot of slimies and stuff. Um, this is when you want to go chase them, like now, head out now. I've got here baits. Cobia aren't that fussy, they'll eat pretty much everything. And even lures, trawled lures, um, soft plastics, they'll eat a lot of things if you can find them. But the baits we mainly catch out here and use, I usually use yakas, the slimies, pike and tailor, they're the main ones. If I get my hands on small silver trevally, I do use them. They are very good. Cobia don't want a small silver trevally, trust me. Sand crab's another one. If you get a if you go out crabbing, get whole crabs. You don't have to have them live, just fresh. Like put them in the fridge for a night or two. And then what we do is put a rubber band around the shell and hook the, rubber, the hook through the rubber band. That's it. We don't actually put the hook through the crab. The crab's held on with a rubber band around its shell. And that works very well when you're float lining. You let it float down through the currents. Okay. I have a secret bait which I'll talk about that no one, I'm, I'm telling you guys, no one around here knows, but it does work really well. I don't use it a lot because it's hard to get and when you do get it, slimy and smells, but it does work really well, especially for large cobia, really large cobia, okay? I'll tell you about that one shortly. What else we got? Oh, here's a couple of GPS marks, guys. I know you've been waiting for this. GPS marks off the gold case. These are common marks, but they do hold cobia at times. But once again, look for bait. If the bait's there, Fish it. If the bait's not there, move. Look for a bait elsewhere. Find bait. That's, I've got to drill it into your head. Find bait. I don't care. Reef, flat bottom, where it is. Find bait. But here's some marks. I've got the dragon. That's off the pin. That is a wreck. And that's where my monster cobia come from. The biggest one I've ever caught was off there. And I've caught a lot of big fish off there. Just nowadays it's hard to get onto because you know, lots of boats fish it. But have a look as you're going past if you up the pin area. Oh, the board's falling again. There's D cell, that's down off Kira. That's in your small area too, but also a good spot for cobia if it's got bait on it. And generally it does. Both these usually do. Okay, and here's a couple of reefs just off the seaway, out off the, straight off the seaway, known as the cobia grounds. A lot of charter boats and stuff fish around this area, but it's very good for cobs. If the bait's there, trust me, stay there and fish it. And fish it into the night. That's what people don't get. People think cobia daytime, daytime. My biggest cobia and a lot of my cobia are over nighttime fish. Guys, fish nighttime. Okay, this board's driving me nuts falling down. Fish nighttime, like late afternoons into the night, guys. You don't have to be out there all day. Late afternoon into the night, go late afternoon, catch your bait, find your bait, catch your bait, and then put your bait back down where the bait is and wait for late afternoon into the night and you'll find some big cobs. Okay, here I've got some tips. I've got like, see, fish late after into the night. Nighttime's awesome for big cobia. Use unrated fresh sand crabs, like float line a sandy down, a big sandy, just float it down through the current. Another good way to find cobs. And with live baits, see this little, my awesome picture? Cut tails. And I've got a picture of a, uh, a picture of a tail here, it says cut tail. So about halfway in the bottom, halfway in the top, just snip them off. And what that does is stop this livey swimming all over the ocean. Instead, he's down under the boat, he's kicking like mad, he's putting out a hell of a lot of vibrations, but he's not towing your sinker and lines all around. So if you're fishing four or five or four rods, three rods, these baits aren't going to swim around each other and get you tangled. They kick, but they don't really go anywhere. But they put out, they kick fast and they put out a hell of a good vibration, so it's a good way. So 
just cut the tail. So we don't cut too close to his main body because then his arteries will kill him. Just, just, just about halfway down from top and bottom. Give her a snip. Okay. And at the bottom here, this is a little diagram of my awesome pictures. This is how I fish. Guys, see how I fish for cobia? There's me on the boat. I've got four rods out. I've got a big massive bait, bait school here. See the bottom's fairly flat. Big massive bait ball. And I've got a few marks. These green lines uh, just say big fish, like cobes or something, okay? So what do I do? You've got here tides running this way. So I go up tide, up wind, up tide, drop anchor, spot lock, however you're gonna do. So you're not actually on the bait. What you'll wanna do is put your baits, like you've got your deeper ones here, should be just probably a little bit closer, just to the edge of the bait. And then you've got your light ones just floating down on top. These are all make really easy targets for the big fish circling around the bait. And when you cut the tails like this, and the fish are vibrating like mad, but not really going anywhere, you've got that happening there, there, there. You've got four of them going, all kicking. These cobia are gonna think, what the hell, and come up for a look, up current, and they'll smell the bait. And being up current, you don't spook the bait, you don't spook the fish, you don't spook everyone. People come and drop straight on the top, put a big anchor down, the bait disperses, the cobia take off, um, big fish take off. People, I don't know why, but they seem to drop anchor and stuff right on top of the bait. Don't, always, always. Go up tight a bit, find the edge of it, go up a little bit, spot lock or drop and make your baits head back towards the bait in the current, okay? That, that way you don't spook everything. So what we've got here, I've got one bait down deep. So that's where the biggest sinker on. So I'm just, he's about a meter off the bottom. And I've got, I've got the secret bait there, but you can put a live bait on. Live bait or secret bait, doesn't matter. Then I've got a slightly smaller sinker and one midwater, then a smaller sinker again. These two are mid, but one's down about 30 metres, one's about 20 metres, whatever, or 20 metres and 10 metres. And then I've got one unweighted, and this one's just swimming around unweighted out the back. I throw him out in the current, so the current takes him down towards the bait, and he's unweighted. Or oh, that's a sand crab. I can use a sand crab there, or a livey. And that's the best way to find cobia, because there's cobia all through the water column, guys, from the bottom to the top. If they don't hang on the bottom, they don't hang on the top, they're everywhere. So setting out your baits different depths is a good way to go. Uh, I've been talking fast in this one. Okay, time to get to the secret bait. And this secret bait, and a lot of you are probably going to screw your nose up and think, what the hell are you talking about? But trust me, guys, give it a go. This bait is probably the best bait you're going to come across for sharks. Everyone uses it for sharks, but no one uses it for cobia. And you should, because they freaking like it. I don't know why, but they do. Is just get yourself a freshwater eel, cut into chunks, probably, you know, five inches long, just five inch chunks, put two hooks in it. Drop it down near the bottom, a big chunk of dirty, stinking, rotten, or not rotten eel, but just eel, fresh eel, in chunks, and drop it down. If it goes, there's going to be two things here. It's either going to be sharks or cobia, but nine times out of ten, when you fish around baits, schools like this, and you know cobia are there, cobia are going to pick it up and eat it and run. And the only fish, and generally when I do have used this in the past, the cobia do eat it are rather large. Okay? So the secret bait, guys, is just fresh water eel. And most people don't know that. That's something. Um, everyone says they know what the secret bait is and talk about crabs and sand crabs. Well, crabs are great. A lot of people don't use them, but the guys that do know do use them. They work well. But I haven't seen or heard anyone use eel. And they do like it. I got told that years ago by an old fisherman and that they love eels. How the hell he worked that out, I don't know. But he's right. I have used it, have caught cobia. I just freshwater eel, it's just cut into chunks, about five inches long, put two hooks in it, drop it down to about a metre off the bottom. And if there's any cobia in the area, like so, they'll eat that. If you haven't got eel, don't don't stress, put a live bait on. Have four live is a different way to different way to sinkers. Okay, up current from the bait. The fish will come to your baits, don't worry guys, they will come to your baits, as long as you're not like half a mile away. Okay. So hopefully that makes a bit of sense. Guys, fish bait. Fine bait, fish bait. Cut tails off your liveys here, that's a really good tip. Uh, fish into the night, a lot of people run home or don't think you catch cobia at night time. That is not true, this is the biggest fish I catch are at night time. Fish night time. Go out late afternoon, catch your bait, more importantly, find the bait. Anchor just off the bait, send your baits out so you're fishing late afternoon into the night. Great time to find big cobs. Okay, stock standard baits plus your eel. Don't forget, don't care if the bottom, if flat bottom, you're fishing a wreck um, or you're fishing reef covered in 
bait. Make sure there's bait, make sure there's arches around it. They'll be cobia. Don't just go looking for a nice big ledge like that and a couple of dots and put it down. You might get lucky and catch a cobia that's passing through, but nine times out of 10, you're not gonna get bugger all unless you're chasing snapper or something else. If you're chasing cobia, find bait schools, guys. Just bait schools. Look around, don't care about the bottom. Find the bait. That's the main thing I've got to drill into you, bait. I don't care if it's sandy flat bottom, fine bait. Okay. Um, well, I hope this helps. Guys, you've got a couple of months to get out there while the whales are there. Late afternoon, I would like to hear in the comments about a few of your trips. If you guys actually manage to catch a cobia or two, let me know. I'll be happy to hear it. And the other thing is, um, if you're looking for the rigs I use and the outfits and stuff. The video up here is one of my older videos and I do talk about the rigs and the rods and stuff I use. So look at that one. Okay, and well, I hope I see you again next week for, I don't know, we'll see what happens. Anyway guys, thanks for watching and see you then.